Smith. We'll begin with Jay Anderson. Jay, your line is now live. Go ahead. Hey, thanks very much, and uh, welcome back, uh, AJ. Good to good to see you finally getting in here. I mean, you're basically going last out of the uh, the Grand Prix uh, with the fights last week. So, what has the waiting been like for you? Um, it's been good, you know. Coming off a of knee surgery back in January, and then uh, set the fight in June, then COVID breaking off come March. Um, I was scheduled June 6th, and uh, I would say I was probably about 70, 80 percent ready. Um, so that fight got canceled. I wasn't, I wasn't too worried about it. I was going to fight regardless. Um, just the fact that I felt I was over 70 percent, you know, 70 percent is passing. So for me, I'm ready to go. Um, to taking time, and then once I felt 100 percent, we had finally locked in a fight date for uh, November 19th. And I'm like, yo, I'm already in shape. I'm ready. Yo, dad, let's go to Big Bear. So we uh, we went to Big Bear, did camp up in Big Bear. And, you know, we just had a great camp. Took all the guys up there. Took my dog up there. And uh, I got to enjoy the wilderness, We'd go hiking, four or five hour hikes, you know, daily runs, mountain runs. And uh, it, was, it was good, you know, just to get away. There's a lot going on in the world right now, especially L.A. They ride in every other week and whatnot. So uh, it was cool just to get away. And how have you been able to kind of maintain your focus with so much on the line? Because I imagine it's hard not to look ahead. You see the other side of the bracket go through. There's a million dollars on the line, potentially the title. Uh, how do you maintain your focus on the task in front of you, which is a, a former champ in Darian Caldwell? Uh, it's one fight at a time, you know. I've, I've known Darian since I was a kid. I've watched him wrestle against guys like Bubba, Dake, and so forth. So uh, he, he's... Uh, He's a great wrestler, you know, but for me, I, I don't really focus on what other people are focused on. I'm, I'm going to go in there and I focus on what I'm capable of. And uh, at the end of the day, this isn't a wrestling match. This is mixed martial arts. And I feel that's something my coach and my father, he, he's always put into me, you know. I've always been well-rounded at everything, you know. So now I'm mastering what I've been well-rounded at, and that's being a mixed martial artist. Steve Jewin, go ahead. AJ, thank you for the time today. I want to take you back to something you said early on in your career when we talked. You once told me that you like to just walk up to a girl, give her a rose, smile, and walk away just to leave her wondering who is that and what's he all about. Can you still do that kind of stuff in the COVID era? Uh, no. You know, I've changed my life. I don't really – I don't go out as much anymore. You know, I used to I used to work in a club in Hollywood, so I get off work, I'll go buy a dozen roses from the little lady, just help out, support, you know, and go give the roses. What am I going to do? Take them home. So I'd go hand them out, you know, or give them all away. And, uh, yeah, I can't really do that much anymore. So, uh, I don't know. I've, I've kind of changed my, my mentality, my lifestyle, and just – I. I'm perfecting my craft, you know. Um, I know what my calling is. I know what I'm here to do now, and I'm, I'm literally giving it 110 percent. You know, I'm doing my weight cuts right. My weight cuts are easier. You know, just doing things right. I'm sitting what five pounds over right now. I look healthy. I feel great. Um, usually, when I'm five pounds over, I'm hurting a little bit. You know, so especially when you're getting older, you know, you gotta you gotta change up. You gotta mature. You know, if you're not learning lessons, and and evolving from them then uh you're, you're just standing stagnant and that's kind of a big problem you know uh there even even though every fight i win there's still a lesson to be learned and i think that's the big part is finding the lesson in the win speaking of that maturation how do you see it playing into the possibility of this fight going a full five rounds no nah, that's not happening <laughs> it's not happening uh so your first round finish then is that what you're predicting if that's the way Cardwell wants it, then yeah. But uh, he, he's got to pick and choose his poison, you know. Um, I'm, I'm going to make him fight, you know. No one's made him fight. Everyone goes out there, runs after him, and he swoops in for a takedown, you know. If he swoops in for a takedown, I'm fine with that. I'm going to slice his face open with some elbows, and I'll probably catch him with the triangle, arm bar. You know, my jiu-jitsu is superior, and I haven't really showed it off. So for me, this is a fight where I can go show off my stand-up and if I get taken down, it's okay, you know? Like, I, I know I'm comfortable off my back. So, um, this is a great fight for me, you know? Another stepping stone. Another stepping stone. All right. Well, we look forward to it on Thursday. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, Donna. Hey, AJ. How's it going? Um, you had a bit of a fracas at the press conference way back in March, pre-COVID, before anything happened, with, uh, with Darian himself. 
have you seen him in the hotel? How are relations between you and Darian Caldwell right now? Um, so after that, I saw him come, what, like, I think it was March when Slice was scheduled to fight here. Um, I wouldn't say it was nothing personal. I just told him what it is. I'm going to break him. You know, he breaks. I'm going to break him. And uh, it's nothing personal. You know, I like the guy. We kick it, have a few drinks after if you want. But, like, once once I step in that cage, we are no longer friends. I have a job to do. I have family to feed. And uh, that's a big part to me, you know. It, my dad looks out to me you know he's put everything into me so uh i, I got i got a lot to fight for and uh there, there's no friends when you step in that cage of course you're very focused on darian caldwell coming up thursday night but i would have to imagine you were in front of your tv watching last week as your two potential final opponents were fighting emmanuel sanchez and patricio pitbull both picking up wins could i get your analysis on those two performances yeah um so the whole selection pitbull did a smart move you know he switched Cardwell to my side of the bracket. Um, he's got, what, three people he's beat already on his side of the bracket now. Um, and he took the easiest fight, Carvajal. Nothing against Carvajal. I think the guy has a lot of potential. I think he also just went into that fight way too cocky. So um, with that being said, you know, Emmanuel Sanchez has got a lot of output. You know, he he's not a knockout artist. He's, he's not a finisher. You know, he doesn't have knockout power like that. But he puts out a lot of volume. And uh, that's something that frustrates Patricio Pitbull, and that's what happened in their first fight. So uh, it was a good fight. You know, I saw a lot. Patricio is a power puncher. You know, he's not someone you want to get caught caught by, you know. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting, interesting fight. And uh, for me, it is what it is, you know. I, I don't really care who it is. Either way, I'm going to kick their ass. Steven? <laughs> Hey, um, so I think I know the answer to this, but who, who do you think you're going to face in the in the finals? <laughs> you probably weren't expecting this. So I've had a dream that I choked out Emmanuel Sanchez. So I don't know. And then watching that first fight, it was kind of close, you know. So I think Sanchez might get the edge over him just because of the output. But if Pitbull touches him on that chin, that's going to be a problem. If he touches anybody on the chin, it's a problem. So, uh I don't know. I hope I hope I hope Sanchez wins. If he wins, cool, I could beat his ass and, and let him know he barked up the wrong tree calling me out and so forth. And then Patricio, you know, I'm coming for that hundred and fifty five pound title as well. So uh I, either way, you know, we'll run it back to back or if Sanchez wins, then he knows I'm still coming for that fifty five pound title. Do you often dream about prospective opponents? No. Um I, I just randomly dream. Um so I don't know. I think it's like a gift from God he's given me. You know, I, I just see glimpses of my life. I don't know when it's going to happen, what's going to happen. Like, I dreamt that I fought Georgie. I didn't know how the fight went. I kind of saw myself outside of the cage, and I saw myself in the cage with Georgie right here. And literally, it was an angle of a of, of a, a recording that a fan had tagged me in, and I saw it. I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's what I dreamt. So I didn't know how the fight went, but I, I knew I fought a good fight. You know, I didn't see anything that happened, but I knew I wanted to go out and make a statement that fight, and that's what I did. Hmm. And when was the stream about Sanchez? Um, this is a while ago. This is probably before the uh, Georgie fight. You know, so I, I don't know when, you know, we were scheduled to fight before he pulled out probably because he knew he knows he wasn't ready and he probably still isn't ready. And even if he is ready, I'm going to show him he's not ready. But um, I don't know. I call him the pillow puncher now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right, Santiago. Hi, AJ. Greetings from Amsterdam. How is your father doing? And is he going to be in your corner? Yeah, he's right here. Just keeping a gangster, harassing everybody. <laughs> Surprised he's been quiet this long. <laughs> he's always in my corner, man. Uh, that, that's that's pops, you know. Uh, I don't I don't think I could fight without him. And even if I had to fight without him, there probably wouldn't be too many fights without him. How special was it for you to share a card with your dad last year? Oh man, it was surreal. That was. Uh, that's probably one of like my favorite iconic moments in my career. Whether it's like that, that, that's probably over beating the world title, you know, or getting the world title just because like it's I've always watched him, you know, and he's always watched me. So to be able to be the first father son to go out there and win, you know, I, I actually brought the idea to Bellator and then 
you know, we, we went out there and we did it, you know, we stole the show, you know, he finished his guy, I finished my guy, and there's no one that has done that in any sport besides the, the Griffey, you know, the Griffey uh, father and son, and that's baseball, you know what I mean, it's, it's not like this MMA or boxing, you know, there's a lot more trauma to the body, so uh, for him to be 50 years old and still competing is phenomenal, you know, I, I don't think I'll be competing at 50, and checks better be stupid large, but... <laughs> Good luck of fight night, sir. Thanks. Matthew, go ahead. Uh, hi, Jim Key, Matthew on the Fight Night Picks. Just wondering, how do you feel fighting without a crowd? You're one of the more well-known guys in Bellator. You don't really have a really big talk in the crowd. Do you think it will be any different fighting without that kind of energy in the arena? Oh, it's going to be amazing. I, I think it's, especially for this fight, because like I was saying earlier, uh, Carter likes to break, so there's there's no crowd to pump him up. There's no crowd, you know what I mean? It's it's literally mental preparation here. And uh, that's something I'm always key and gamed on to is mental preparation. I'm going to leave it all in that cage. Um, no crowd is even better, you know? I can hear what his corner's saying. He can hear what my corner's saying. The difference is I've had my father who's known me for 25 years as a coach, you know, I can tell the difference in codes of whether he actually wants me to shoot a takedown or he wants me to throw a kick, you know, so if, if you get caught up listening to what he's saying, you might get your, your head knocked off your shoulders. Yeah, for sure. And last thing for me, uh, you had kind of mentioned a future move up to 155 pounds. Is that something you plan on doing right after this tournament's over? Or is that something that's a little bit further on down the future after you defended the belt a few times? Um, I don't know. I feel I've, I've fought 16 people in this division. It's kind of, you know, this tournament, what I had to fight to get into the tournament. I feel I've made a, a pretty big stamp on this turn on this division altogether. So, uh, man, Patricio has got that 145 and 55 pound title. I said I was going to be a champ champ. What? 2015. So, um, I'm ready, you know, I, I don't see there's any need for me to hang around. Who else is there really to fight? I've walked through the tournament. I've walked through 16, 17, 18 individuals at that point at 145 pounds. So I, I don't think there's anything really left for me at this division. Ben? Good afternoon, AJ. Uh, just two from me. Um, so you're 16 fights deep into your career, all of which, um, all of them come under the bear, sort of banner. You've been given a range of different styles to contend with during your development, and as a result, you appear to look even better each time you go in there, even while the level of competition continues to go up. How much of a role do you think the way that Bearsaw has handled your career has played in you becoming the fighter you are today? Um, that's a big part, you know. You, you guys have seen some people get rushed. You've seen them kind of literally build me, you know. Um, they, work, they work with me. They work with my father, you know. Um, and that, that's why I've had time to kind of grow, you know. Um, there were fights I was fighting with broke hands and, and so forth. But uh, there's a lot of preparation going into fights and so forth. So I would say they've, they've built me the right way, you know. And now that I'm ready, it's, it's time to send it full go, you know. Um, whoever they want to shoot at me, let's do it, you know. I'm, I'm ready at this point. You know, I've been calling Patricio's name since day one. So it's uh, it's prolonged with him, you know, it's overdue and uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's nothing personal there. You just got a couple pieces of property that belong to me. And uh, just one more. So I heard, saw a really cool stat earlier and I have to give credit to uh, MMA Junkie for pulling it up. So you're currently tied with Anderson Silva for the longest winning streak in a major promotion at 16. So um, were you aware of that stat and how do you feel about being on the verge of making history? No, nah, I was not aware of that. Um, man, that's my thing. You know, I like to make history. I like to keep win streaks going. And uh, I'm all about the stats, you know, 16 fights, 11 finishes, you know, I think what, nine, eight of nine of them in the first round. So just like basketball, how many threes you hit and how many twos you hit. And I'm, I'm looking to kill the stats and just really set, set the, the standard high. You know, I got a two year old brother, three year old brother who's doing arm bars already. So when he steps into the mixed martial arts game, you know, he'll probably be the first world champion at 18. I guarantee that. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of set the bar high for him. You know, we're very competitive in our family. So, uh, my dad was undefeated, what, eight years. I think I'm four years into my career now, five years into my career. So that's that's my first goal is beat Pops' record, you know. Um, that's that's a parent's job, make your offspring better than you. So uh, I got to make my little brother better than me. We'll take a couple more here. Jake? 
Hi, AJ. Jake Jones MMA here. Um, I think it's amazing how highly you speak for your father. And come, come the fight night, you're going to be representing Team Body Shop MMA. You've got a few of your team fighting beneath you on the card. Your father coaches you. How does it feel to be leading this team on the night? And what will it mean to you to compete for that title in the future? Um, you said to compete together in the future? As in, as in you and the whole team are competing on the night and you are the main event for it. How does oh. it feel to be in that position? It's awesome, man. I, I wouldn't say I'm a leader in the gym. I don't try to think of myself as a leader because I see us all as equals. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I definitely stand out as the leader. And I think that's something I'm uh, starting to pick up more in the gym is being a leader. You know, um, our, all our egos, tempers, you know, we all want to be the best. So we all kind of try to outdo each other and beat each other. And uh, that's what that's what makes us so great. You know, at the end of the day, regardless, we whether we get in fights with each other we're going to tell each other we love each other at the end of the day walk it off and once that we walk out the gym doors all right let's go eat so uh my dad's really done well at mentoring all the guys and making it to where it's a family you know just not a team you know he doesn't keep contracts on guys you don't feel comfortable by you know but it is what it is so uh it's um it's fun i like fighting with the whole team you know we've Back at the forum last year, September, we had what? I think it was like eight guys on the card. We had seven guys come out with wins. So uh, it's it's fun, you know, the guys that put in the work, you can see in their skill set, how they're evolving, how they're becoming better. And uh, I'm just proud to call them teammates and brothers, man. They're, they're really growing, you know, and the better they get, the better partners that I have and the better that we can get as a unit. Yeah, well, you guys are a fantastic team. Best of luck, mate. Thank you. All right, last question here comes from the line of Chris D. Santiago. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, AJ, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. So, um, like it's been said in previous questions, you, you know, you've amassed an amazing record of 16 wins and no losses in your career at only 25 years old, which I find crazy. We saw Habib retire at 29 and no. So I have to ask, is there like an ideal or specific number of wins you'd like to earn while still undefeated? Um, not really. You know, I've always said I'm going to be the Floyd Mayweather MMA. So, uh, getting this first title to getting my second title, that's obviously two big steps. Um, from there, you know, I haven't really set any goals past that. You know, those are two big accomplishments. I'd say defending, defending those titles, um, just see where the path takes me. You know, I don't really know where I'm going to go after that, what I'm going to do. Um, I love Bellator. I've had all my fights here. I'd like to unify the belts, you know, show that the organizations don't make the fighter. You know, the fighter makes the organization, and I am the superior athlete in the world. And uh, I think it'll be good, you know. There's a lot of brands I want to mess with, you know, undefeated, stickers. So um, I like I like being able to reach out and connect ties, you know. These are all big corporations. They all sit at their big tables, and they're going to have conversations and uh, I want to be that person that they talk about and that, that I feel I can attach myself to and represent their brand well, you know. Um, it's just sitting back, sticking to the plan, you know. Um, I used to get all worked up about it. You know, I need this. I got to get this done. Now I'm just, I'm just enjoying the show, you know. I'm enjoying the ride and just being the best person I can inside and outside of the gym. Great. Thanks for the time, AJ. Good luck this Thanks week. Thanks for having me, guys. Expect for that finish.